Hey everyone, I'm Clover and I'm solving a puzzle by Philip Newman called Orbiting Pairs. This was originally posted in GAS on June 5th, 2024. We have normal Sudoku rules, so we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outlined 3x3 three three region. On top of that we have Kropke pairs, so those are these black and white dots. When you see a white dot, those two digits are consecutive, and when you see a black dot, those two digits are in a 1 to 2 ratio. In other words, one of them is twice as big as the other. Not all dots that are possible in the grid have necessarily been given, so there might be other pairs of digits that have that relationship that haven't been marked. We also have XV pairs, so we have some Xs in the grid that tell us the two digits on either side have to sum to 10, and some Vs in the grid that tell us the two digits on either side will sum to 5. Again, not all possible x's and v's have necessarily been marked, so there might be other sums of 10 or of 5 in the grid that haven't been marked with x's or v's. So let's start with this 1. This tells us that this sum can't be 1 plus 4, so it must be 2 plus 3. Now if we've used 2 and 3 in this region already, this can't be 1 and 2, it can't be 2 and 4, it can't be 3 and 6, so it must be the only remaining possibility 4 and 8. So now that we've used 2, 3, and 4 in this region, this sum to 10 has to have a low digit in it, and the only remaining low digit is 1. So that is a 1, 9 pair. So these are going to be 5, 6, and 7. The only one of those that can be part of a 1 to 2 ratio is 6, and then this would be a 3. And this could be either 5 or 7. We have a 3 here, so that keeps this from being 2 plus 3, so that must be 1 plus 4. And there are 3's in both of these columns, so this also can't be 2 plus 3, this must also be 1 plus 4. So now this 1, 4 pair tells us that's a 9, that's a 1, that's an 8, and that is a 4. Now, this is in a relationship with this digit, so these two sum to 10, so that's going to be 6 plus 9, or 6 or 9, plus 1 or 4. Um, this and this are in a 1 to 2 ratio, so this is either 1 and 2, 4 and 2, or 4 and 8, so we know that these are both 2 and 8 because that's the only way to sum to 10. Now neither of these are within 1 of 2, so this must be a 9 and then this would be an 8, and we can resolve the stuff that we have pencil marked in now. The only digit consecutive with 1 is a 2, so we're going to place a 2 there. There's a 2 in this column now, so this can't be 2 plus 3, this must be 1 plus 4. This digit now can be neither 1 or 4, so this has got to be 2 plus 3. So, what next? Um, this cell can't contain 1, 2, or 4, but it has to have a digit that's smaller than 5, so that's going to be a 3 with a 2. That makes this an 8 and makes this a 4. So if we want to have a total sum of 10 here, we need a low digit, we can't use 2, 3, or 4, so my low digit has to be 1, and this is going to be 1 plus 9. So these digits are going to be 5, 6, and 7. 6 has to be one of these, because it's a consecutive pair, so it's either 5 and 6 or 6 and 7, as opposed to 5 and 7, so we can eliminate 6 from that cell. There's a 1 in this column, so this can't have a 1 in it, so it must be 2 plus 3. This can't be 2 plus 8, because there's an 8 in the column, so that's going to be a 3, that's a 2, and that's a 7. That makes this either a 6 or an 8, and makes this either a 2 or a 4, but because there's a 2 in this column already, that's going to be a 4 and a 6. 4 and 2 are in a 1 to 2 relationship, this is a 3 now. 2 and 1 or 4 are in a 1 to 2 relationship here, but the only one that's consecutive with 3 is going to be 4. So that's a 4, that's a 1, and that's a 4. Okay, this is not a 7 because there's a 7 in the column, and the 7 also makes that a 5 and makes that a 7. So now let's take a look at this pair. So we can't use a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 9. So that's going to be some combination of 6, 7, and 8. Okay, so um, let's have a look at some Sudoku. So these are both 4s. So the only position where we can put a 4 in this region is going to be right there. And I have... Um, so I need a 2 in this region, so that's going to be a 2. This is going to be either a 6 or an 8. And let's take a look at some of these rows. So in this row I still need 1, 5, and 6, and 1 can't go in those cells, so that's going to be a 1. There's a 5 because there's a 6 in the region, and then this will be a 6. These need to be 2, 3, and 8. The 2 can't go in these two cells, so it's going to go over here. 
and then I have a 3 and an 8 there, which makes this a 6, and that's now a 7-8 pair. These will be 5, 7, and 9 to finish the region. That can't be a 9. This is also either a 5 or 7, but because there's a 7 in the row, that's the 5, that's the 7. This 5 here makes this a 9, and then this is now a 5. Now I still need a 4 and an 8 for this region. They'll go there and there. I need 1, 5, and 7 to finish this column. The 1 can only go in this position, so that's either a 5 or 7, and so is that. Okay, now in this row, I need 5, 6, and 7 to finish off. So that can't be a 5. It also can't be a 7 because of the 7, 8 pair. So that's going to be a 6. That's not a 7, so it's a 5. And then that's a 7, making this a 5, 6 pair, which resolves because of the 5 up there. In this column, I still need a 6 and a 9, which will go in those positions. And in this column, I need a 3, a 7, and an 8. That can't be a 3. Um, in this region, I still need 6, 8, and 9. 8 can't go in those cells. That's going to be an 8, a 6, and a 9 in that order. Here, I need a 7 and a 9. They'll go in those positions. And I need a 1 and a 3 to finish the region. Let's take a look at these columns now. So these will be 2 and 8, which resolves some of what we have here by Sudoku. This is going to be a 5, 7 pair, which will resolve like that. And finally, we can do each of these rows. This will be a 3, that will be a 6, and that will be a 9. Uh, time is obviously wrong. I left that one sitting for a little bit before I solved it with you guys on camera. But that is how you solve Philip Newman's orbiting pairs. Very elegantly designed grid. Really interesting visual theme here. I enjoyed that one. So thank you, Philip. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I will catch you next time.